Hey everyone, Robert Faringo of Doc Sports here with another episode of What Are the Odds? Joining me as always is my main man, Rafael Esparza. Rafael, how are we doing today? I am doing well. Uh, but it's nothing, nothing but nothing craziness we've seen the last two weeks uh, when it comes to football. So I'm doing good. The sports books are doing fabulous, but the betters, including myself and the NFL betters, Boy, we're just begging for our W uh, this Sunday because uh, everyone I've talked to has not had good NFL experiences right now. All right. Well, if we can help some of our viewers out, go to DOCSports.com for free picks and also use the free 60 link down below in the description to get you $60 towards any handicappers picks in any sport that you want over at Doc Sports. All right, Raphael. So you mentioned the NFL. So let's start there. Okay. First uh, game that jumped out at you when you were looking at the card for upcoming week three. Well, we have two Monday night football games. Can one of them go over? How about that? And the primetime unders have just been cashing and cashing and cashing. So uh, I'm a little bit skeptical on two Monday night football games. Will both of them go over? Because I, I like watching over games when I'm watching Monday night football. I know that's crazy. But I think the first one that jumped out at me was the, was the Chargers Steelers. Raise your hand if you thought both of them would be 2-0 and going into week three. That's uh, it, nuts. The total is 35 and a half, anywhere close to 36. It's going to be a run heavy game. This is going to be a Big Ten Iowa versus Iowa State or Iowa versus Penn State kind of a football game. Run, punt, run, punt. It's going to be one of the type game. Both teams want to establish the run. So it's a game I'm going to talk about with my little bit of excitement on this one. I like the Pittsburgh Steelers on this one. It's going to be crazy to say that, that Justin Fields can be 3 and 0 maybe in there. Do they maybe call Miami and say, hey, Miami? What would you want to give us for Russell Wilson? Because he's just going to be sitting on the bench holding a clipboard if, J- if Fields goes 3-0 and o in that weak division because you figure Baltimore's got two losses. Cincinnati has got losses already. We already know about Cleveland and their offense with Watson. Pittsburgh, with the total season wins opening up at 7.5, close around anywhere between 8 and 8.5. If you have that over, you're sitting pretty because I think they win this one at home in a very low-scoring game because they will establish the run on the Chargers, and that defense of the Steelers is going to really, really bother the Chargers all game long. So I, I'm leaning towards P- Pittsburgh on this one. And when is Tomlin going to get some really, really good credit? We always say, oh, almost underachieved or overachieved head coach, and everyone gets a respect. What he's doing right now is phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, he's an all-timer, and this Pittsburgh team is just doing what Pittsburgh does. Uh, It's really interesting with these two teams because I was a lot higher on the Steelers than a lot of other people were heading into the season. Uh, You mentioned Mike Tomlin. He's never had a losing season. So for me, that carries a lot more credibility than, say, the people that were high on the Jets this year. Well, We've seen the Jets be losers for three decades. We've seen the Steelers be winners for three decades. So one team gets the benefit of the doubt. One team doesn't. So I'm not surprised that the Steelers are off to a very strong start. Uh, You know, you're mentioned about Russell Wilson. He's not going anywhere. Miami doesn't want him, doesn't need him, and he wouldn't do anything for them anyway. Uh, I don't think Justin Fields is going to start 17 games this year. And I think they kind of knew – when they acquired both of these quarterbacks in the offseason, that neither one of them were extraordinarily reliable. That's why they had both of them to begin with. And I think they're going to need both of them before it's all is said and done. Now, let me let me go back to something about the Chargers, because they're a team that I was not as high as some people were coming into the season about the Chargers. I get it. I like Harbaugh. He's going to be successful. He's proven that everywhere that he's been, he's a football guy. It's not complicated what he does. He runs the ball. He gets his team to play good, disciplined football, and that's what he's doing with the Chargers. But let me ask you, Raphael. Everyone's getting all giggly about the Chargers and Harbaugh after their 2-0 start. Does it bother you at all that the two teams they beat are both pretty bad teams? I mean, the Raiders were – you know, a couple questionable calls in that Baltimore game from being 0-2. And Carolina is obviously the worst team in the league this year. So does that does that take a little bit of the wind out of the Chargers' sails right now? That's why I'm a little shocked that this number did not move to a solid three after the Steelers won. Because you said it. I mean, two easy Ws playing Carolina. What Carolina has looked like in their first two games, I thought maybe, ooh, the Saints beat them in week one. How good are the Saints? But that Saints W against Dallas. Is really me is really pumping me up to put the, the Saints a little bit higher than I thought so. But and you said it, the Raiders should have lost last week to get the miracle win 
uh, last week. So that's why I'm a little shocked that the betters have not jumped on this and moved this to a, a higher number to a solid three with Pittsburgh. Just on that defense alone, all Fields is doing, just don't mess up on a game. Don't throw a bad turnover, run the ball, and that defense will get you to the fourth quarter where we can win the game. This one is at home. A little shock that the steel curtain is not minus three across the board right now as we speak on a Tuesday. Yeah, I can I can understand, definitely understand that logic. And again, I think that number is staying below a field goal. Number one, because I think a lot of people realize that this game probably will come down to a field goal. This could be a 16-13 game, 13-10 game. It could be a 9-6 to six game. That really wouldn't, wouldn't surprise me very much. But I think that the two rivers are running together here, right? Like there's been a lot of hype about the Chargers all offseason, and they get off to their 2-0 start. Uh, a lot of people have been selling their Steelers – stock basically i think a lot of people just want to see mike tomlin have that first losing season so there's been you know divergent storylines that are coming together with these teams Uh, i'm actually going to have my free pick in this game so i don't want to deep dive into it too much but you mentioned the saints i know you're down in new orleans that's why we didn't have our what are the odds episode last week because of oh a hurricane yeah mother nature not a fan of what are the odds apparently but uh saints not a fan of me either Help me sort this out for, you know, we'll, we'll talk about the saints and what your overall impressions are. Cause I know that this is a team that you follow pretty closely being there in new Orleans, but first just help me break down this number. So on Saturday morning, the early line on this game had Philadelphia around minus three. Okay. That's before the two teams played in week two saints go out and blow out the Cowboys. And then Sunday night, Monday morning, Philadelphia was still favored in this game. The not, Number dropped to Philadelphia minus one heading into Monday Night Football. Eagles go out. They lose. Then all of a sudden on Tuesday, now the Saints are two-and-a-half point favorites. We saw a five-and-a-half point line move, not based on injury, like the eight-point move that we saw in the Colts-Packers game last week with no Jordan Love. This is basically on air, maybe on some betting. Can you can you explain this one to me, Raphael? You don't often see that severe of a line movement in the NFL if there's not a massive injury. We see it on what people see and what people saw in Dallas. I mean, first of all, the betters got booty spanked last week. Now they now they see the Saints 2-0, the best offense. I don't want to say who they still yeah, they scored in every drive, 15 straight uh, points that they scored. Everyone's beat that horse to death. But the way they have been scoring, their speed, everyone said the offensive line was going to be their Achilles heel. But so far, I haven't seen that Achilles heel pop up. That offensive line has picked up. Oh, come on. Uh, the running back looks like he's 22 years old again running around. The only thing that scares me is, how, is Taysom Hill is he going to be able to play? So he's day-to-day with chest injury. A chest injury in NFL is probably worse than an ankle sprain in the NBA because especially the way Taysom Hill plays, tight end, fullback, quarterback, we know he's going to get hit on Sunday if he plays. How bad is that injury? I just think what people see that offense putting up 90-plus points in two games and the Eagles coming to the Superdome on a short week. They played Monday night. Lost on Monday night. I guess the Kirk Cousins losing streak on Monday night is over because he's won four out of five now on Monday night football. I think that's the reason why this number and this number is going to be three. I can guarantee you this one's going to be a very popular parlay bet, my Saints money line bet, over bet as well. This one's going to be a very popular NFL bet. I would not shock if this number keeps on climbing just because people bet what they saw last. So do you think that this movement was based on money or do you think that this movement was based on air? Do you think the sports books were trying to get out ahead of what they anticipated was going to be a lot of New Orleans action this week? Or do you think that, you know, some big bettors came in and, and pounded this pounded this line to move it that severely? The wise guys are on the Eagles right now. This is all tickets written. I mean, they said the more tickets were written on the Saints Super Bowl Monday after that second win than they had all summer long. So, again, people are betting what they saw last. So many tickets are being piled in on Saints, Saints teasers, Saints parlays. Like this would probably be another suicide pick as well just because they're at home, even though how's everyone's suicide pool going right now. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be very interesting to see where this number closes. I, I hate to say this. I, I kind of like the Saints. I'm probably not going to play it just because – of uh, me jinxing them, but if they win and go three and zero, we're going to hear a lot of car MVP being a favorite to me. Maybe to win MVP, they're going to be up there for uh, a Super Bowl. More Super Bowl tickets written. Don't forget the Super Bowls in New Orleans. It's going to be very interesting if they go three and zero. 
Okay, ask me this. There has to be value on the Eagles just strictly from a line perspective. Forget what you think is going to happen. But there has to be because riddle me this. If Saquon Barkley makes that catch, picks up that first down, and Philadelphia wins that game on Monday night, are they are they favored in this game? Does that does that line hold with Philadelphia minus one? That's that's where it was going into the game. And if Philadelphia, who who up until you know the final four minutes of that that game, or actually basically until the last two minutes of that game, looked pretty good. If they win that game on Monday Night Football, beat Atlanta, go to two and zero. Do you think that number holds at Philadelphia minus one, or do you still think we see that massive uh, line movement overnight? It probably would have been a pick them just to, and then let the let the money and tickets written dictate who's going to be the favorite because you can't be wrong on that pick them. And don't forget, when some books, when they start putting numbers up over the summer, not two weeks, but when nine uh, in September 11th, when most books start putting this number up, this was four and a half, not three and a half. The Eagles they put this one, the Eagles, as a four and a half because everyone thought Eagles were uh, easy to win that division uh, between them and the Cowboys. We all thought this division of the NFC South was the worst division in football. Right now, it looks like it's the best division in football to take out at Carolina because don't forget, Tampa Bay is undefeated as well. All right, so we're going a little bit backwards this week. We started with the NFL. Let's go back to college football. Uh, what was the what was the first number or the first matchup that really jumped off the board at you when you were breaking down college football action this week? I'm going to go to a, a great matchup of Rutgers and Virginia Tech. If Virginia Tech was my favorite to win their conference, and then they blew a dud in week one. I just don't like this Rutgers team. I think Virginia Tech – Got that big dud out of the way. Their defense is back on there. And they're playing good special teams, which we should see Virginia play good, good special teams. They played it last week on special teams. Uh, they, they had great position on every time they had on punts. So I think special teams is going to be key. He's a little bit shocked on this number. So I think Virginia Tech is the play here. They're at home. Lane Stadium is going to be rocking. Metallica is going to be rocking. I'm just not sold. On Rutgers right now. I had Rutgers a little bit ahead of Indiana maybe this year, and boy, I was dead wrong on that. IU looks like uh, they're going to be a really good team. Love the recruiting and the the players they got. I'm not sold on Rutgers going into this match at Lane Stadium, so I think uh, Virginia Tech has to be the player. And I'm a little bit shocked in the total uh, and it came down a little bit. So we, we could see points on this one if Virginia Tech can run the ball. This number came out with Rutgers a three and a half point underdog. Where where did you have this number? Where were you looking at it? I thought I had a solid three. I, I thought to give the home field, Virginia Tech, that, that, man, I would have loved to see if they would have came in here undefeated, Virginia Tech, like, which I thought they would. I would have, that could have been maybe like a four and a half, five. So now shaving it down to two points a little bit just because of that one bad loss, which so far we've seen some really bad losses in, in college football and in the NFL. So is it maybe because the practices are lighter and they're not, they're not as more informed as we've seen in both pros and college, but a bad loss to start so i think that's why it's pretty much going to be a solid three by kickoff i actually jotted down ruckers early in the week i think this one's going to be a no play for me uh i mean look you don't have to look very long and very hard to find acc teams throwing up all over themselves in the non-conference including virginia tech's loss uh at vanderbilt to to start the year this virginia tech team had a ton of hype it wasn't just you that were on them to potentially win the acc and hey maybe they still could they haven't gotten into league play yet maybe you know that was just a blip on the radar week one dud we see that happen all the time so virginia tech's still in play but this is another acc team that has had a lot of hype and it wasn't just that they lost to vanderbilt they really impressed me against marshall or old dominion that's a bad old dominion team and they just kind of slept through that game i i felt like uh, Rutgers did hammer Virginia Tech 35 to 16 last year in that game. They were up 21 to three. There was never really a close game last year. And the thing that that would concern me if I were a Virginia Tech backer about that game is, OK, now you get them at home. Uh, you got the revenge factor. You got a small line is that Rutgers ran the ball 34 times for 256 yards in that game. They basically just rammed the ball down Virginia Tech's throat. Uh, is Virginia Tech much better on, on that side of the ball? Raphael, do you think that Virginia Tech is going to be able to hold up against the running game uh, this year in this matchup? That's the only thing that scares me is their, is their defense on the run. I mean, old, ODU was able to run on them. I'm not giving ODU – they hung around with South Carolina. They had the lead against South Carolina a couple weeks ago. So this team is not like 
is some scrub uh, FCS school. The Old Dominion can play. Looks like they're going to be sticking around and cover a lot of games all season long. I'm giving that benefit of doubt, but a little bit worried on the Virginia Tech uh, uh, run defense. That's why I'm hoping special teams can give them uh, uh, a, a little bit of a boost at home looking for the revenge. All right, the college football game that jumped out at me is one of the best games, one of the biggest games on the board. Uh, an SEC matchup featuring Tennessee, a seven-point road favorite at Oklahoma. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so first of all, it, it surprised me that Tennessee was this large of an opening favorite on the road in Oklahoma. Okay, just, just sticker shock. Let's put aside what the teams have done up until this point. You see Tennessee going into Norman, seven-point favorite. That seemed a little bit strong. That seems a little bit heavy. But what also surprised me throughout this week is that this line hasn't moved. It hasn't budged really at any of the sports books that, that I've been tracking. You would think that uh, Sharps public would be coming down strong one way or the other in this game. I will point out that this is the first time that Oklahoma has been a home underdog of a touchdown or more since 1998. So Raphael, sort me through this one. Why is this line as large as it is? Do you think that they're kind of disrespecting Oklahoma's home field advantage? And why isn't this line moving? Are you surprised by that at all? Not really. It's the time slot is 7.30. There's no UFC Saturday night. This is going to be the only game that the odds makers, the betters, the TV viewers are going to be focusing on. There's really nothing close to this matchup. So now when you're an odds maker, you figure it's going to be a huge teaser. Tennessee and over. Tennessee and over. We've all seen Tennessee score touchdowns like there's no tomorrow. Tennessee's been in the news because they're judging a big now for, for, for tickets, the 10%. So everyone knows about Tennessee and that offense and in the news. I think that's why this one has not moved. I would be shocked if we see seven and a half. I have not heard or seen any big money coming in on Tennessee. I've heard money coming in on Oklahoma more than I heard big money coming in on Tennessee. This one's just going to be a very popular teaser and parlay bet. So I think the odds makers right now know, okay, we can just focus on here. If we move the money correctly on one side, we're going to get the other side so we don't have to move it drastically because this is them. This is their Monday night football. There's no other really big game around it. There's no good baseball games around. Like I said, UFC is not on on Saturday. There's no really good boxing. This is what everyone is going to be betting, focusing, and watching so the odds makers can just sit there and be very cautious. And don't forget, cautious is good for the sportsbooks right now because they're sitting on a bucket full of money. They have not lost in three weekends of football so far. So they can roll the dice a little bit and take more money than normal because they already have money that they won in week after week. All right, Tennessee has three wins, 69 to three, 51 to 10, 71 to nothing, okay? You look at those numbers, wow, amazing, right? Greatest offense of all time. Our Tennessee backers getting a little out over their skis, getting a little bit too excited about what they've seen from the volunteers up until this point. Or you're going to look at this and say, forget, hey, forget about the offense. They've only given up 13 points. Their defense is ranked in the top five. These guys are a legit national title contender. Do you think that this is a little bit of, a, a little bit of hype and a little bit of overreaction from some early season results? Or is Tennessee the real deal? It could be. I think if I had to choose buying stock on Tennessee and Ole Miss, because if you kind of look at Ole Miss schedule, they're putting up Tennessee type numbers and Tennessee putting up Ole Miss type of numbers. I would buy more stock at Ole Miss. I like Ole Miss's defense a little bit more than I like Tennessee's defense, but I think Tennessee could be the real thing. Now, if they win this game and blow them out, is that really going to change my mind? Because no, because I didn't have Oklahoma as high as everyone else thought. I'm a little bit shocked that this one wasn't a little bit higher when they opened this up or even more just for what I've seen on paper. Oklahoma has not excited me as much as I've seen Tennessee play and that high potent offense that they have. They have a lot of speed. Now can Oklahoma run the ball and keep that Tennessee offense on the sidelines? That's going to be the big key. Yeah. I'm not ready to buy into Tennessee. We've kind of been down this road before with them over the last 10 years. The last time that they went on the road and beat a top 15 team was 2006. So we're talking almost 20 years since they've won a game like this. I know Tennessee's putting up big offensive numbers. I'm not really going to comment on how weak the competition has been 
numbers are numbers, right? But I guess my point is this. Oklahoma beat Texas last year. I know that was last year, but a lot of the players from last year's team are back for the Sooners team. So I'm just saying that they've faced high-end talent before and not only held up but won. They are getting this game in their home stadium, a place that Tennessee is completely unfamiliar with. And Oklahoma just over the years played in the Big 12. Nothing that Tennessee is going to do offensively is going to be so much different from what Oklahoma has seen in the last two decades in the Big 12. I know, you know, big shock when teams like Tennessee and Ole Miss, you know, brought some of these high-powered, fast, up-tempo LSU offenses to the SEC. That was a kind of a big sea change. Oklahoma's been going up against teams like this for literally decades. So I don't, I just don't think that they're going to be rattled by the volunteers. I am surprised that they are as big of a favorite here uh, on the road. And I think the value is probably with the home underdog in this one. And Raphael, last, last game that I want to talk about before I get to your free pick and get you out of here, kind of a similar situation as this Tennessee Oklahoma game, a line I was a little bit surprised about, and that's USC going to Michigan. Here we have the defending national champions. I know that they haven't looked good. They lost to Texas. They didn't cover the spread against their, their two weaker opponents. They're still the defending national champions. They still have a fantastic home field advantage, and they are hefty home underdogs against USC. This number actually opened around, what, three, three and a half, and then when it's instantly bet up to six, it's come back down to around five and a half. Uh, sort me through this. Is this one similar to the Tennessee Oklahoma game? Completely different situation. Uh, what's your What's your sense on another uh, high profile game with a road favorite? Different situation because I love when people say, "But they're the defending champs." Remember when the Miami Marlins won the World Series and they blew up their team and they stunk the last year, but, but they were the defending champs. This is that what Michigan is. They lost so much on defense. They have a brand new quarterback playing this game. We all know if you have two quarterbacks. By week four, you have zero quarterbacks. I don't like this spot at all for Michigan. I, I, I've been telling people this Michigan team could have four or five losses at the end of the year just because of all the chaos and hectic that you're hearing uh, uh, of just the noise of what Khakis did to them when he jumped ship and, and went over there. I think you would think it could be very interesting. I didn't think they were, I, I didn't think they were going to beat LSU in, in their opening game at the Death Star in Las Vegas. They looked fast. Their defense looked like I can't believe I'm going to say this. SEC fast defense, but if they play the way they did against LSU, they easily win by double digits. And uh, sorry, defending champs. Uh, it's going to be a very, very long season, I think, for Michigan. All right, Raphael, what do you got for me for a free play? This one, I'm going to college football just because I love college football better than the NFL. And Fringo always wants to remind you guys that I hate the NFL as any as possible way. I'm going to Marshall and Ohio State. And for two factors, A, it's a great middle spot. This one opened up at 50 and a half. I did a show on Monday and I said, hey, look at this game. Bet the total now at 50 and a half. Uh, Ohio State destroyed Western Michigan, destroyed the last two uh, opponents going 50 plus. It's already 52 and a half. If we start creeping up to 54 and a half, 55, 56, then we have a six point middle. What is Ohio State going to do if it's 49 to three in the fourth quarter? They're just going to run the ball out. Look for that middle spot. I still like to over all the way up to 54. If it goes past that one, then I would say take a shot at the under. I'm looking for myself a middle spot, but I still think there's great value on the total. It's 52, probably going to be 52 and a half, probably be up to 53 by Thursday. It's an early game. I wish it was like a 1230 game because I would love to see what the betting public does in the morning all the way in the afternoon. But I still think we can see 55 and just because of – the offense that Ohio State has. Ohio State, I can't remember that wide receiver's name. Maybe you can help me out what Ohio State has. Uh, probably one of the best wide receivers I've ever seen play college football right now. Marvin Ohio Harrison State. Jr.? No, he. this guy's better <laughs> than Marvin Harrison Jr. We'll see. Hey, who was your big total win on last Saturday? Uh I was praying to the gambling gods, and they answered me back. I had Texas over. It was 49-7. to 7. I had the total 56 and a half. I started watching UFC because I thought I had a big, fat loser. And then our boy Max, who loves to text us and rub it in when we lose, but never texts us when we win, he actually texted me and told me I won. So uh, I was actually shocked on that one. I like your free play total for the same reason that when we talked about that Texas free play last week. I think Ohio State has a chance to cover this number by themselves. Oh, Marshall yeah, gave I up do. 30, 36 points, somewhere around there, to Virginia Tech, the team that we talked about. 
Ohio State much better offensively. And a great point that you made when we were discussing games a couple of weeks ago, I don't know if it was in our video or if it was just us talking on the phone, you said style points matter now, so teams aren't going to hold back. Since it's all about that positioning in that within that 12 team playoff, teams are going to drop the hammer. If Ohio State can, has a chance to score 60, 60 plus in this game, they'll do it. They won't, and they won't feel bad about it. So, why do you think Texas that. leapfrogged Georgia in the rankings because of style points? That's it. That's exactly right. So, I look for Ohio State to do the same thing. Uh, sharp play there. I'm actually going back to the NFL for a free play. One of the games we talked about, Steelers Chargers. And I'm actually going to disagree with you. I'm taking the Chargers as my free play in this game because these two teams play such similar styles. For me, it comes down to the quarterback. And I just trust Justin Herbert more than I trust Justin Fields. And if we're going to be involved in one of these close, low scoring, slobber knocker, field position and defense types of games when it comes down to somebody making a play in this game uh, as long as the Chargers don't let George Pickens be that guy I just trust Justin Herbert to make a big throw lead a big drive you know come up with a big conversion more than I trust Justin Fields who is a guy who you've said it he he hasn't been pretty but he hasn't been sloppy yet it's only a matter of time with him. It's coming. He's got a two or three turnover game uh, in his bag, and this just might be it. So I will take the Chargers in this game. All right, he is Rafael Esparza. I am Robert Frango. That's one of the odds for this week. As I mentioned, go to DocSports.com to check out free plays, free picks, more free videos, and to get picks and packages from the top handicappers in the country take advantage of that free 60 link down in the description we will see you guys next week carpe diem and good luck